Let's be for real. Three, two, one. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here and if you're not, welcome back. My name is Rochelle and I am a professional meteorologist. It's what I do for work. It's what I've been doing for work for the past seven years. I got this question on one of my videos showing what it looks like when you're looking at the green screen in the station versus what you see at home. And someone wanted to know how could they what are the steps to becoming a meteorologist, a broadcast meteorologist, a news person? So I did write down a few steps here and this is gonna be more so for before you get into the business. So like things you should do in school or even if you're starting out in the business, but really this is gonna be focused toward people who are high school or even in college, they took a class and they're like, oh wait, I like this what can I do with this? How do I go about making this a career? So I'm going to talk about how many steps do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five to seven ish tips. You can probably combine some of these, but let's get into it. First thing that you're going to want to do is pick a school. Some schools have majors that you can build and contort and kind of mold it's giving plato mold them into a major that can resemble meteorology atmospheric science sometimes climatology can also work kind of in that same realm i'm sure i'm missing maybe one or two other majors but those are the majors you're going to want to look for meteorology atmospheric science and climatology can also work with it as well. If you don't go to a school that has one of these majors, but you still wanna do this, you can still finish at your school, especially if you like your school. You can finish and then you can take something on the back end so you can get a certificate or a master's degree in meteorology and that would suffice if you wanna end up doing broadcast TV meteorology as your long-term career. You just will need some formal education you'll need to take those science classes those math classes in order to become a meteorologist i don't know if y'all can hear i'm sitting right next to my heaters and it is winter time in new england so they are just rattling so hopefully that doesn't bother you too too much so step one pick a school finish school find a program that will give you that meteorological knowledge that you will want to have. That's that's that. So while you're in school, whether you're out of school that has a meteorology, atmospheric, climo major or not, shadow, internships, that is going to be great to let you see whether or not you actually want to do it. Cause it can look cute from over there, but once you're in the station, once you're doing the day-to-day -day task, is that something that you really think that you can continue with for a few years contracts you don't just start at a station you can leave whenever you want in most cases in most cases the contracts are two and i think increasingly more popular are three-year contracts i remember when i started it was two-year contracts but every single one of my contracts has been three years and i've signed three of them so shadowing internships that will help you determine if this is something that you can actually do. Going to school for it is one thing, but actually doing it is something different. Now, me, your girl, I did not have an internship. I never had an internship. What I did was I shadowed different meteorologists. So I would go, I would hang out with them. I would update the forecast. I would call the National Weather Service. So I actually got that newsroom experience and you can see how the shows are running while it's live because from the outside everything looks cool everything looks kosher but everything could be burning down in that station but you will never know is that something that you can handle so get into a station see what it's like i had a classmate he did an internship in tv and he was like nah i'm good so while he was still a meteorology major he went a different path versus tv and there are a lot of different paths outside of TV that you could still use this major for. Next one, get on camera. Get on camera. Maybe your school has a news station. 
get on camera. You're gonna want to work on your presence. I don't have good posture, but you know, work on your posture, work on being comfortable speaking to a camera, speaking, staying focused when there are people all around you kind of blocking out that noise, you're gonna want to get on camera. And with that, you save those clips and you build what's called a demo reel, a highlight reel, like in sports. So you put this together and that's what you would eventually send out to different stations in order to apply for a job. They wanna see what you look like on camera. And if you haven't practiced, you're not gonna look good. So you're gonna wanna get that practice in. Even, I went to grad school for a year before I dropped out. Yeah, so I went to grad school for a year and they would rotate who was doing what on the, the student channel. One week you could be, be producing, one day you're anchoring, the next day you're running teleprompter, the third day you're doing leather. So getting all of that experience also helps you appreciate the other people in the newsroom, whether they're on air or off air, everyone's super important. So getting that experience on camera, newsroom experience, shadow and internships, that's super important. Put yourself out there. I am an introvert to my core. Like deep down inside of me, the first Adam that was Rochelle was an introvert. <laughs> I can talk to a camera. It's what I get paid to do. It's what I've always wanted to do. And here I am doing it just in a different format. You're gonna to wanna to put yourself out there, whether you're introducing yourself to people who have been in the business, people who work at your local station. They're not gonna know who you are. You're not gonna be able to ask questions if they don't know who you are. They're not gonna know what your questions are unless you ask them. You can also ask for advice. It's kind of what I just said, but you can ask for advice. You can ask them, hey, can you look at my reel? I'm graduating next year or I'm graduating this semester. Do you have a moment? Not everyone's gonna respond. Spam folder happens, but you gotta reach out. You gotta ask for advice. You can't just kind of sit in your shell. Me being a cancer, I like my shell, but that's not how you're going. That's not how life works. Unfortunately for us introverts, you gotta, you gotta reach out. Another thing, you got, got to expect rejection. Let me tell you something. Sometimes they just won't respond. They won't even give you the, the closure, I guess. I don't know what the right term is, but they won't give you the satisfaction. What is the word? They won't give you a response. You'll send an email and they won't respond. I was applying for a job, one specific job I remember, and I ended up working in that market, but at a different station. I <laughs> sent the email, we were going back and forth. I was so excited, I was like, yes. Yes, we're getting somewhere. Cause at that point I had sent 30 emails with my reel in it. Wasn't the greatest reel, but it was better than my first reel that I got to get my first job at a local cable station. But we were going back and forth a little bit and I said, okay, blah, 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 whatever the, whatever the email was. And I was waiting for a response and I was waiting for a response. No response came. So that hurt because I was like, oh, I have family there. You know, that would be great. It's not too far from home. And again, I ended up working in that market anyway. It all worked out in the end. I had to go somewhere first before I landed back in that area. But you gotta expect rejection. You gotta expect that the, the dial tone is gonna come and it's just gonna be nothing. You're not gonna hear back from a lot of these places. However, as I'm recording this, within the last month, few months, couple years, TV especially has become, what's, what's the equivalent of a seller's market? There are a lot of jobs open and they're trying to get people to fill these slots. Do with that information as you want, but within the last couple of years, a lot of, lot of people have been looking for talent, producers, whatever, to fill these slots. So go to, go to conferences. If you're a student, yes, yes especially if your school pays for you to go to a conference, take yourself to a conference. That's coming from me on the other side that never went to conferences because I was the person, I could not not be in class because then I would not pass the class. I had to be there, I couldn't leave because I, did, I didn't understand. I didn't know what's going on. So my behind needed to be in that seat, in that classroom. So I never actually went to a conference until I went and paid for myself to go. So if you can go, I would highly suggest you go to a conference, whether it's AMS, NAVJ, what is it? AA, 
JA, NAHJ, NWA. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of conferences that you can go to that would be useful for you as a broadcaster, whether you're broadcast meteorologist or end up, you know, doing weather down the road, but go to conferences if you can. A lot of these conferences also for students, they will have scholarships to help pay for it. And again, ask your school. Some schools pay for it. I don't know if my school paid for it because I never asked because I knew my behind needed to be in the classroom chair instead of the conference chair. But that's just me. Those are all my tips, but I do want to talk about some of the classes that you will have to take. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way, internet. I would get my class schedule for the semester and I would have at least one class that I would look at. And I said, yep, that's my, that's my C class. Because C's get degrees and baby, I got my degree in four years. I'm not stressing about no A's and no B's anymore. I got to college and I said, wait a minute, how I get a C in this class? And I just took this class senior year. Calc one, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you. So you're taking classes like calculus, physics, what else? Chemistry, thermodynamics, dynamics, synoptics. It was a lot. So highly suggest if you're struggling in your classes, because again, I was. I still have nightmares thinking about thermo. Greek letters haunt my dreams. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> if you studied meteorology, science, you will know what I mean. Those classes were royally kicking my little behind, okay? Office hours, group study. At Penn State, we had something called Lion Tutors where for some of the more intro classes, so like some of the lower physics classes, chemistry classes, math classes, you can pay to go to a group tutoring session where they would break things down even more than the professor in class. And I was very quickly humbled by the Pennsylvania State University because <laughs> I was in the Lion Tutors, I was in the office hours. I mean, office hours was a class in and of itself. Every Tuesday for, I think it was Thermo, every Tuesday, it was me and about 75% of the rest of the class sitting around the table in the Walker building trying to figure out what in the world was going on. So do not be ashamed of that if you need some extra help. Most of us went through it. I remember I took a class called Map Analysis. People are like, why are you taking this class? I enjoyed the class. Was it hard? Yes, but I enjoyed it. But I would set my alarm and I dragged myself across campus, tired, colored pencils in tow, and I would be like, look, look, my mans. My mans, I need help. So I, I just had to get over that pride thing because I'm like, look, we're graduating in four years. I don't care what, I don't care what else needs to happen. We're graduating in four years, all right? Where I'm not retaking any classes. In fact, I told my dynamics professor, because I, I was in the office hours, I said, I'm not taking this class again. What do I have to do? I said that to his face and he was a Brazilian guy and he was, he was laughing. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm not taking this class again. Absolutely not. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Go to tutors, uh, set something up with your classmates because I'm pretty sure all of you are gonna be struggling through it together. But once you get that degree, those grades don't matter. If you get C's, those grades don't matter. I didn't get Dean's List until my last semester. And that's partially because I was taking classes like Tai Chi, I think I was taking dance class. So I wasn't taking all of those other classes. I, I didn't have the best grades in college. I had good grades. We was passing and we didn't have to retake any classes, but I wasn't pulling the A's. I wasn't always getting, you know, 80s and 90s on my quizzes and stuff. Cause I remember I was in synoptic. I forgot what I got on my first exam, but it was not good. It is not good. But my second exam, I think I got like a 70 something. My professor wrote good improvement. And I was like, thanks. And now the professor remembers me. I don't know how he remembers me because girl, we was not talking in that class. I'm going to do a second video on how to navigate broadcast TV news. Also, my bad y'all. I keep looking at the wrong part of the camera. I keep looking at myself instead of looking here, which is the actual camera itself. 
I'm gonna do a part two to this, how to navigate TV news, market sizes, and all that kind of good, good, good. I, <laughs> I gotta make, make some notes on that and then I will post that video at a later date. So if you are interested in that, let me know what specific questions you might have below or if there's something I didn't touch on in this video, let me know. I know it's kind of rambly. It's what I do. They tell you to stretch. I've been stretching for seven years and I can explain some of these other terms. That was very, that was very strong. I can explain some of these other terms that we typically use. If you've heard something, you're like, what is that? Just leave your question below and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more of this kind of content, weather, TV news, vlogs, weirdness, looking at the wrong part of the camera, consider subscribing. If not, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Natalie, leave my pants alone. Stop eating on my pants, child, stop.